spent a lot of time looking and digging around in the rocks. Yeah. I saw... Oh, holy... You're killing me, Adventure. Yeah, this feels like a walleye, my friend. Oh, whoa. No, oh, okay, hello. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, folks? Welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. Today, we're going to talk about my top three smallmouth hard baits, and uh, we have a nice variety of the brown fish right here. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, gosh. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh. oh, yeah. And this right here, folks, is a jerkbait smallmouth specimen. If y'all want to catch fish like this, stay tuned. Let's talk about it. So smallmouth bass are one of the most fun fish to catch out there because they fight hard, they annihilate your lures, uh, they're extremely aggressive, uh, and of course, they're beautiful fish. I love holding up a big smallmouth with a camera. There's just something about that. I don't know if it's me being a southern boy that I don't have access to, to big smallmouth that often. I just love going after them and targeting them. And uh, I made a video a few weeks back about my top three smallmouth soft plastics where I talked about the three soft plastics that I think are best suited for catching numbers and size of smallmouth. I will have that video linked in here in the corner and as well in the description below. But I want to talk today about my top three hard baits when it comes to fishing for smallmouth. So smallmouth and largemouth bass oftentimes live in the same lakes, especially up north, but they don't always live in the same areas and especially don't always bite the same lures. And so when it comes to hard baits, we are a lot more restricted. There's not a whole lot of hard baits that really, really work for smallmouth bass, as opposed to soft plastics where you have basically the whole, uh, the whole gambit of soft plastics is applicable in some scenarios to smallmouth. Uh, hard baits are a little bit more niche. And so I'm gonna talk about two hard baits that are for sure hard baits and one that I'm gonna make an argument for. Smallmouth hard bait number one is going to be a popper. So the topwater popper is the topwater that I believe is the most versatile one when it comes to catching smallmouth in all sorts of circumstances, no matter where you are in the country and no matter what type of fishery you are fishing on. And so, I mean, yeah, there's other ones out there. There's a spook, there's the plopper, there's buzz baits, whatever. There's other topwaters, but I think this one stands out for a, for a variety of reasons. The first of which being the way that it interacts with the cover and structure you're fishing around. So if you're fishing, you know, target specific stuff. So a dock, um, lay downs, uh, a grass line. I have found that if you find where that uh, strike zone is, the popper is the best way to go because you can literally pop it slowly and keep it in that area, or you can walk it a little bit faster like a walking bait, and it still has that nice, you know, spurting action on the top uh, of the cup of the uh, of the popper. And I just think that if you're able to keep the lure in the strike zone for the longest amount of time, that's when you're going to catch some of the biggest smallmouth out there. Now, there's situations uh, over a long flat, a big old grass flat, a rock point, where a plopper and a spook are probably going to be better uh, topwaters suit for that, suited for that situation. But in general, I think that most smallmouth are going to be caught on a popper because it stays in the strike zone longest and there is just something about a popper that just gets those smallmouth going. It gets them angry, they come up, they eat it, uh, and part of eating it is getting the hook into them. With other topwaters, you may have an issue with smallmouth coming up and missing it or, or slapping at it and getting one hook in the side of their face. With a popper, because it stays in that area longer and the fish has more time to key in on it and actually eat it, I have found that the treble hooks actually get inside of, of a smallmouth mouth better on a popper than they do on some other topwaters. So that is why I choose the popper as my, uh, my number one smallmouth hard bait of choice. Um, the gear that I throw it on is either a spinning rod or a bait caster. So I have a bait caster here. It is the lose uh, TP1 black speed stick 6.8 medium. It is a topwater and jerkbait rod. And uh, I love the 6.8 because if I'm fishing in a river like I was today, as you'll see some fish catches here, um, I'm able to really, really be accurate with my cast and my flips because the rod is shorter. Now the reel doesn't really matter. Um, you don't really need a high speed gear ratio reel for this one like you do a frog. So I just have a uh, seven one to one. Yeah, seven one to one gear ratio, six four to one will work as well. Um, and then I have 40 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid. On a bait caster, I throw 40 pound braid. If I throw a smaller popper than this one, I got like a tiny one and a half, two inch popper, I'll throw it on a spinning rod so I can get better casting distance and I will throw it on 20 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid. So that is my popper combo. And that is lure number one for soft plastic hard baits. And coming in at lure number two for hard baits is a jerk bait. 
When it comes to catching active smallmouth bass in an underwater situation, so not a top water, but under the water, I don't think you can beat a jerkbait. Uh, a jerkbait is just one of those lures that uh, fits the smallmouth's persona so well. So if smallmouth are known as, as fish that are, that are aggressive and they want to eat something that's, that's twitching around and making noise, a jerkbait is the best way to go. Uh, here I have the Strike King KVD. Um, I don't exactly know what model this is, but it's just the smallest jerkbait that, uh, that Strike King makes. And I have it in a, uh, an IU color, I believe. And, and one thing that I love about the jerkbait is that, much like the popper, you can allow that jerkbait to either move fast and cover water. Like if you if y'all have seen Kevin Van Dam, he covers some dang water with the jerkbait. Uh, but also, if you wanted to slow down and let that jerkbait sit there for 10, 15, however many seconds, it's gonna suspend in the water. If, of course, if you get a suspending jerkbait model. Um, and it's gonna be able to, to, to get those fish that may be a little more lethargic, maybe the water's really, really cold, or they've seen a ton of lures, the water's clear, and they really need to have a good look at it to see if it's real before they eat it. Uh, the jerkbait is just so, so versatile. Uh, I can throw it over grass, I can throw it over rocks, open water, um, around structure up shallow, like the, the shallow jerkbait is, uh, dives through about a foot and a half uh, to three foot. And it's just, it's so versatile. Um, like, like, the, like the popper. I wanted to choose lures that I thought would be applicable to all sorts of smallmouth situations, and the jerkbait is definitely uh, the one for that. So I throw it on 10 pound fluorocarbon, a little bit light for some people, but I found that 10 pound definitely gives me the best casting distance and gets the lure down uh, to its proper depth. I have the brand new Lou's Custom Light Reel. I guess not brand new, brand new as of, as of uh, the, the classic, I believe, but super, super light reel. I've been really impressed with this. It casts so far. And this combo here, I have a six, seven medium light jerkbait rod. This is the jerkbait special um, of the Custom Speed Stick. It is so light. Like I've had people hold this rod and reel and they hold it and they're like, whoa like that, that's how light this combo is and it really allows me to uh to really work that jerk bait and have a great feel of what is down there uh and like i said the 10 pound is cr tatsu for my jerk baits and crank baits i love throwing tatsu line uh, just to have the best quality when i'm down there and so with lures number one and two out of the way we have a little bit of a, a mental dispute for myself um there are plenty of other hard baits out there that can catch small mouth. You can catch them on a crankbait, catch them on a, uh, a jigging spoon. There's, there's tons of other ones. And there's two that I know work very, very well for smallmouth bass. First one being a deep diving crankbait like a 6XD, and the second being a blade bait. And so I could spew information out from what I know in my head to be true, from videos that I've watched from guys like Ben Nowak at the Smallmouth Experience um, that talk about the blade bait and the deep crankbait for, for deep smallmouth bass. But I don't have any personal um, experience throwing those baits and catching smallmouth, so I don't feel comfortable talking to you guys about those. So of course, they do not fit in my list for my top three. And so my number three lure, it may be a bit controversial, you may not call this a hard bait, but technically, the majority of the bait is hard, and that lure is going to be the various types of jig heads. Now you may look at me and say, Tyler, those are, these are not hard baits. A, a, a soft plastic swim bait on a hard jig head and a, an outcast tackle uh, juice jig, those aren't hard baits. But I wanna make the argument they are, because one, the, the jig is actually hard itself. It is either a tungsten or a lead jig head. And if you were to take the skirt off of a jig, as I did on this Outcast Tackle Cage Fighter, this is literally a hard bait. Now, of course, this has no skirt, has no soft plastic on it, but you can add soft plastics to hard baits to make them uh, act in different ways. And so I'm gonna call the jig style lure um, my number three lure when it comes to smallmouth hard baits. And the reason for that is because it is so versatile. Smallmouth live in so many different places, and so I love being able to catch them on really two main ones that I'm gonna fit into this jig head category. First of which being the soft plastic swim bait. Soft plastic swim bait is, is one of the best ways to go to catch fish that are feeding on bait fish, much like the jerk bait fish, except the jerk bait ones uh, are a little more aggressive. They want a lure that's kind of jerking all over the place as it, as it darts back and forth. The swim bait fish, like this tiny little swim bait, this 2.8 inch. Uh, these types of fish want it really finesse. They want it reeled very slowly, just kind of ticking across the bottom. And that's when those big smallmouth are going to come munch it up. Now the places I like to throw a swim bait like this are, are over any kind of rocks or open water. I hardly ever throw swim baits like this around grass and around wood because of the exposed hook. That is where this comes in right here. This is the Outcast Tackle Juice Jig. Now the Juice Jig is really, really versatile because I can fish it 
anywhere. Rocks, ducks, grass, wood, uh, and especially around wood and, uh, and grass is where some of those river smallmouth are going to be hanging. I love it in any sort of crawfish, bluegill uh, looking pattern, and, uh, or any green pumpkin, watermelon, that kind of thing. And like I said, it's just super versatile. I can skip it, I can, I can swim it, and I found that smallmouth cannot resist a jig if it is flipped in a lay down here in a river, or any lay down those fish are sitting in uh, in a lake or pond. And of course the gear for these two is going to vary uh, very widely based on what type I'm throwing. So if I have a tiny little swim bait, I'll throw it on a 6.6 to a 6.9 medium or medium light spinning rod. The juice jig, almost always on a 7.2 medium heavy to a 7.3, 7.4 heavy. Uh, anywhere, depending on how uh, thick of cover I'm fishing in. Open water, 7.2 medium heavy, uh, really, really thick docks with grass, punching 7.4 heavy. Now, as always with these videos, the 90% rule applies. So 90% of the time, these are going to be my top smallmouth lures, but that other 10% of the time that I am not accounting for, there's gonna be places where you can catch big old smallmouth doing something completely different than what I talked about. So as promised, we have some awesome fish catches coming here at the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet, and we'll see you all next time on TRF. Let's get up where I'm starting to hang in the grass a little bit. There's a fish. There's a fish of some kind. What do we got? It looks brown. It looks brown to me. I like brown. Why aren't you fighting very hard? What are you? What, early. Are, you, what are you doing? <laughs> He's like, you woke me up too early. I wasn't. A, I wouldn't. I didn't sign up for this. All right. Ugh, scary. Look at him. Ate the jerk bait. That is a fun little bite. That's a chunky guy. He's gonna grow up to be a big boy. Future five pounder. I hope so. Thanks, bud. There's one. There's one. Yes. <laughs> Got him on the follow up lure. Got him on the jig. Bring it in. Let's go. Didn't eat the popper in that area, but he ate the outcast tackle juice jig. Braided line is very important there to get him out. Awesome. Beautiful. Thanks, buddy. Always got to have a follow-up lure, and the jig is, in my opinion, one of the best ones for that. Does it count as a hard bait? I think so. I think so. Oh, I got him. Ha ha ha. There we go. Little guy. Little guy on the popper. About the smallest smallmouth I've caught in a while. Boom. Little guy. Barely ate it. I had to kind of sneak up on it. And look at him. Look at what he's got. But the thing about a popper, as I mentioned, is they almost always get a full treble hook in their mouth. It's almost always a lot easier to actually get the hook into a small mouth. Oh, that guy's bleeding for some reason. Let's get him back in the water. Yeah, easier to get a hook in their mouths if uh, you use the popper over the spook or the buzz bait or any other top water. Oh, it's a stinking pike. Dang it, get out of there. Ah, oh, no. It wasn't even a bass, it was a pike. <laughs> I should have known. Got them all funky rigged here. Gosh, get out of Please shake off my popper. I don't want you at all. Mr. Pike. Okay. Well, that was fun anyways. <laughs>